Here's some information that you've seen from the last two videos. We've got the wiring diagram, the construction, and the bottom view of both the NPN transistor and the PNP transistor. Here is a push-pull transistor amplifier using an NPN and a PNP transistor. We're going to be using 12 volts and we're going to be looking at the output with an oscilloscope. I'm going to be connecting a thousand hertz signal to the input of this amplifier. Let's start all the way over to the left of that signal at zero. And as you can see there's three points in this sine wave where we'll have zero. And at those points both transistors will be conducting about the same amount. Now all the way over to the left as we go positive the NPN transistor at the top is going to start conducting more and the PNP transistor at the bottom is going to start conducting less. Thus push and pull. Now when the signal is all the way at the top positive the NPN transistor is going to be conducting the most and the PNP transistor at the bottom is going to be off or conducting very little. So let's continue on back down to zero, meaning that the signal is now becoming less positive. So the NPN transistor is going to start conducting less and the PNP transistor at the bottom is going to start conducting more until we get to zero. Let's continue on in the negative direction and as it becomes more negative now the PNP transistor at the bottom is going to start conducting more and the NPN transistor at the top will be conducting less and when we have the most negative point of this signal the PNP transistor at the bottom will be conducting the most and the NPN transistor at the top will be off or conducting very little. And of course when we start heading less negative towards zero the PNP transistor at the bottom will be conducting less and the NPN transistor will start to conduct more and when we get to zero which is where we started, they'll be conducting about the same amount. Let's take a look at the output of this audio push-pull amplifier. I've got a thousand hertz going in and we've got a thousand hertz coming out but notice that there's a little bump just above zero and just below zero. Here I'll expand this out so we can get a better look at it. So we've got a problem here. It's a sine wave all right but it's not as smooth as it should be. So let's go back to the drawing and I'll explain what we need to add to this amplifier to get a nice smooth sine wave. Here's our original wiring diagram and as you remember there's a little bump above and below zero. Well, what that is, is the BE junction of each transistor. To get it to be forward biased, you need at least dot six to dot seven volts to get that junction to be forward biased, to conduct. Now, to correct this problem, we need to add two compensating diodes and they are connected right here between the two bases of each of those transistors. Here's our setup on the breadboard and on the left you can see the two diodes but notice that I have them shorted out. So what I'm going to do is we're going to be taking a look at the scope 
and I'm going to pull one wire off at a time so we can see what effect it has on the output of our audio amplifier. Okay, we're all set up. And I'm going to pull out one wire. And this is what it looks like. Notice that the bump above and below is about half. Now I'm going to pull out the other one, and now we have a very nice sine wave. This is what we're looking for. Now both compensating diodes are now in the circuit. So this is our final design here with our compensating diodes. And this is what it looks like on the breadboard. Thanks for watching.